Have you ever checked your car's fuel economy? If so, you probably find it really hard to get close to the manufacturer's claim figures. But the trip computer says 42. That's why there are changes to the way a car's emissions and economy figures are calculated to make them more realistic. And so here's the car wide top 10 things you need to know about what's going on, the effect on car tax, and how you could even save you money on a new car. And for more information on that, click on the pop out banner in the top right hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video to go to carwow.com. Up until now, a car's emissions and economy figures were calculated using the NEDC, which actually stands for New European Driving Cycle. With this, the economy isn't actually tested out on the road. It's tested in a laboratory with the engine actually out of the car. And the engine is run on a cycle to mimic driving in town and out of town. While this gives a consistent test procedure across all cars, which is fair, the test cycle itself isn't actually that realistic to how cars are actually driven out on the road. The test cycle actually accelerates the car's engine so very, very slowly that it's almost as if it's driving Miss Daisy. We only doing about 19 miles an hour. I like to go under the speed limit. If you're driving like that out in the real world, it would be so painfully tedious and annoy other road users. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Also, while the test may have the word new in its name, it was last updated in 1997. And since then, cars have become heavier and more powerful, both of which affect economy and emissions. Essentially, the NEDC test procedure resulted in overly optimistic economy figures, which were pretty hard to achieve in real life. And that set you up to fail. OK, I'm going to give you some examples of how much you can fail by. So, this is a one litre turbo petrol Vauxhall Astra, supposed to do 63 miles per gallon, but computer says no. Computer says 40 miles per gallon. This Ford Fiesta one litre turbo petrol is supposed to do 65 miles per gallon, but the trick computer says 42 miles per gallon. This 1.6 litre turbo petrol Nissan X-Trail, according to the official figures, is supposed to return 44 miles per gallon, but yeah, I'm only getting 35. This Audi RS4 has a 2.9 litre V6 twin turbo engine, which is good for 0 to 60 miles an hour in around four seconds. Yeah, it can still do around 32 miles per gallon, according to the official figures, though I'm actually just getting 25 miles per gallon. Now, more about that later. Due to many people complaining about not being able to achieve their car's claimed economy figures and because certain models have been found out to be more polluting than expected, new, more realistic testing procedures have been devised. These new tests should help cut real-world emissions and make the claim manufacturer's figures for each car more achievable. The first new standard, and the one that's most important to you, is the Worldwide Harmonised Light Vehicle Test Procedure. Catchy, huh? That's why everyone's just calling it WLTP. Like the old tests, this is still done in a lab. However, the test cycle is more appropriate for modern motoring, the latest cars, and the British climate. For instance, the simulated test cycle is actually done over a wider ambient temperature range for a longer distance with more varied driving conditions and a higher average top speed. 170! No, not like that! Now, while this new test is way better, it's still not perfect. The driving style used for the procedure mimics someone trying to drive economically. So you still may find it hard to achieve the figures out in the real world, especially if you like to drive your car like you stole it. For instance, I'm gonna show you exactly what happens to your car's economy if you accelerate hard, such as when you're trying to test out your car's 0 to 60 time. Ready?
You may not know this, but the WLTP testing actually started in 2017, but the big change comes on the 1st of September 2018 for the new registration. That's when the new emission standard comes into force. And so after that date, all new cars sold must have had their emissions and economy figures calculated using the new procedure. If you're looking to buy a brand new car before September 2018, these changes could be really good news. Some manufacturers and dealers have large stocks of cars that don't actually meet the new regulations. Now, these cars can't be sold as new after September. They have to be sold before then, which means you should be able to get some great discounts. Obviously, some dealers won't be able to sell all their stock before this deadline, so what they'll do is register them to themselves and then sell them off later as nearly new. In the trade, these cars are known as pre-regs. And these cars are pretty much as good as new, yet usefully less cash to buy. Now, if you click on the pop-out button in the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video, you can check out the best deals on new and nearly new cars at carwow.com. If you really do want to save money, then another reason for buying a car before September is due to tax. When the new official emissions figures are introduced, they'll govern how much you pay in VED, which stands for Vehicle Excise Duty. Whatever, it's tax. But because in some cases, the new emissions figures are expected to be worse than the old emission figures, it means that a car that you buy in September could cost you more to tax than if you bought it before September. Finally, there is another new test that's been introduced. It's called the RDE, and that stands for Real Driving Emissions Test. This is designed to measure exactly how much pollution, such as nitrogen dioxide, a car really does emit from its exhaust pipe. And rather than being performed in a lab, this test is actually done out on the road in a wide variety of driving conditions. Now, this new test is particularly important because it can affect how much you pay in tax on a new diesel car. To tell you the truth, it's all a little bit too complex to explain here in a video, so click on the pop-out button in the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video to see how it could affect you. If you enjoyed this video and you think it could be useful for a friend, make sure you share it with them. Also, if you click over there, you can see how much you can save on a new car through CarWow. Click down there to help you decide whether to go for a petrol car or a diesel car, or down there to see exactly how CarWow works.